I come from a middle-class Turkish family. At the age I'm 17, I went to the US to learn English, and I lived there for about 12 years. As an au pair, I put myself through school, and after having lived there 12 years, I have not taken any money since I, at the age I'm 17 from my family, so I'm financially free uh, since the age I'm 17. So then I moved back to Turkey and started a great corporate job that I love, build a family, have two kids. I go back and forth to work, you know, to my house and to work, until I saw this picture. I was in an airplane in a business trip and took out my economist and saw this picture. What do you see in this picture? I see a 40-year-old man marrying a 10-year-old girl. That's called child marriage. Child marriage happens 39,000 child uh, a day. So I, I was astounded. I said, I can't just keep going back and forth to work. I want to do something. And boom, I decided to become a social entrepreneur and do something uh, for society. And, but what was I going to do? You know? And this actually opened up my eyes to some of the things that women do face around the world. And what are they? It's not just child marriage. There are actually so many things uh, that happen uh, you know, regarding the woman. As Sherry Wu, the leader of the Half the Sky movement, put in her TED Talks that gender gap is 21st century's biggest problem. So what was I going to do? Just, you know, I picked money because I couldn't go to Afghanistan and save the girl. And money is something that I know in my corporate job for 20 years. That's sort of what I'm doing, budgeting strategy. And also looking 2008 crisis, we saw that individuals have to understand from money much more and actually finance, do their financing first. And also, maybe the most important is that I believe the economic freedom, the financial freedom, is the root cause of a lot of the problems or a lot of the issues that are being faced. So I picked money. And gentlemen, I'm not just talking for women. I'm actually talking about you because, you know, men live less than women. We all know that, right? Because men have a lot of stress on their shoulders, and that mostly comes from economic stress. So here what I'm saying is that, you know, let's all earn it and manage it together and live happily ever after. Actually, men are extremely important. I mean, look at my life. There is my father who sent me to the US to learn English and then there is my American father who taught me you know uh, all about finances introduced me to the financial world and there is my boss uh, boss of the big conglomerate Shaheng he actually encouraged me when I went up to him with this initiative he took me to Davos and you know and so many things opened that vision and last but not least there's my husband who's home with our kids now and who's a big support to me when I give you the story so men are extremely important in this equation so this is Demet. Demet's a photographer. She's uh, 38 years old. She's one of the women that we do reach out. Uh, so a couple of years ago, started a television show and writing books and seminars all across Turkey. And I'm very happy to say that we started also an association, Financial Liter Literacy Association of Turkey, and where we're trying to build the ecosystem for financial literacy. So Demet, like many women, she said, I don't understand from money. My husband takes care of it. My father takes care of it. Money, I don't have money to understand from it. So there was this Chinese walls between Demet and money. And guess what? Society wasn't helping that either. Demet, money, give her credit, she understands. So she was not very much being helped. But guess what? Demet, it's been two years. She was crying at first when she first called. Now she manages her credit cards, she does budget, she's saving for retirement, and you know, she's saving on a down payment, and most important, she's having her kid start saving. So, you know, actually, maybe we should not uh, uh, be so uh, bad on society either. I heard a Greek joke last night I want to share. There's this li little Greek coffee shop. It's all men, so that guy enters and says, I'm going to ask a question. If you know, depending on your answer, I'm going to give you a kota, chicken, did I say that right? Or alogo, horse. And so he goes to the first guy, he says, who is managing your house? The first guy says, my wife. And then he says, here's a kota for you. And it goes to the second one, who is, you know, making the decisions in your house? My wife, here's a kota for you. And it goes around and around, and comes to the last guy in the little coffee shop in the village. He says, who is managing your house? Who's making the decisions? The guy says, oh, of course, me, look at me. He says, okay, then a logo for you. And then he says, which color you want? I have white or black. He says, mm, I gotta call my wife. <laughs> so, you know, we are not so bad. So, this is the met story. So how, we, how, are we, how is it going to happen? First of all, you know, girlfriends, stop looking out for somebody else. 
It, you could be an entrepreneur, you look for your accountant, or you, know, you look for your father, or you look for your husband, or your friend to do your finances. No, it first has to start for you, and not just because of you, for you, for your family, and for the society. And how is that going to start, really? We can just all start it here in Athens with a conversation. So there's a money conversation that has to take place, and that goes like this. So, you know, it can take place between a lot of people, but here I pick the one, the husband and wife. So the wife goes to the husband and say, honey, I want to manage our money. And what does he say? Wood, 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 wood. Yes, he's a bit confused, you know. And then, and then Demet, or any woman, just keeps on saying, OK, you see this picture? This is Fortune 500 women. Fortune 500 CFOs are more than Fortune 500 CEOs. And these nine women in total are managing $681 billion. And that is three, size the ti three times the size of Greek economy. And there is Laguerre, there is uh, Yellen, who is a candidate. And actually, in S&P 500, last year, there were 40 CFOs and women that are this year, it's 54 CFO women. So let's give women credit. There are some out there who are actually managing money. And the conversation goes on. And the conversation, the next thing is that, you know, honey, I want to invest our money. And he's confused again. What? So here, you know, who is this man? Do you know? Warren Buffett, he's known to be all, you know, the uh, all times uh, one of the biggest investors. How does Warren Buffett invest like? Because everybody wants to invest like Warren Buffett. How does he invest like? Warren Buffett invests like a girl. That's actually a book. They've done a study on this. How does he invest? Number one, women do trade less. Number two, women do uh, ha have less pressure from their friends, uh, peer pressure. Number three, women research more learn from their mistakes more, and number four, because of less testosterone, women take less extreme risks. So let's give women some credit. You know, University of California, they did a study for seven years, that's a lot of years, and women outperformed 4.6% on average. So women can invest, I'd say. And the conversation goes on. Honey, I want to spend our money. What? And actually, the first thing we're going to say, women and spending, what comes to mind? Shoes. I'll show you a study, and uh, you know, they asked the woman, "Do you regret getting rid of at least one pair of shoe?" 92% says yes. And they ask woman again, "Do you regret getting rid of, sorry, separating from a boyfriend?" 19% says yes. <laughs> so shoes have got something to do with it. But you know, putting that aside, where do you think women spend their money? Take a wild guess from what you see here. Just think for a second. Education, nutrition, and health. When women have money in their hand, this is where the money goes. In emerging markets, a staggering 90 cents on a dollar goes to the human resources of the house. And actually, women, on average, 40% more likely to donate money also. So it goes back, plows back into the house and into the society. So give women credit for spending also. And, you know, listen, we are all humans, right? We all can have our vulnerabilities. And uh, if you cannot stop yourself with the shoes or bags, can I have a bag here? Uh, I'll just show you a 10-second rule, which is very, very, uh, you know. <laughs> listen, you guys do it with electronics. Don't give me that. So we like, we, we women like, um, you know, uh, shoes and bags. So 10-second rule works like this. You'll count to 10, and, you know, you can use it. It works very much with all the, uh, everybody in Turkey that we are doing. 10 seconds. I'm going to talk to the bag. I start. Are you a need? Are you a want? Do you have to come home with me? How many of you do I have at home? Do I have to put you in my credit card? How many times am I going to use you? Are you a smart buy? No, I put that down. So you can just do that if you really cannot uh, you know, train yourself. You see, we have solutions for everything. In. So we go on with the conversation. And the, the conversation goes on. It says, honey, I want to earn money. I want to become an entrepreneur. What? This is, this is a picture of Aysun, and Aysun has a, a, a husband who's a construction worker, and that's her company that you see. I met her in the Aegean Sea, the one we share with Greece and not fight. So she is in, uh, she's in her company, actually, and we've spoken with her to go into microfinance, microcredit, and the one Mohamed Yunus started. And guess what? All the women that take credit from microfinance, the payback ratio is 97% all around the world. And Aysun is growing her business now with microcredit in Turkey, and also like that she can also work in the winter. So let's give Aysun credit. And this is Bedriye. 
Bedria is a, you know, I, th that's who she is. She's a role model, she's a serial entrepreneur, and what she does is that she makes profit and impact at the same time. So this is the 250 franchisee woman that she started in Turkey. She has this little gym, everybody starts in a 30 square meter. And this is great really, because these women make money and also give the other woman health and, and self-confidence. And this is really growing. And let's give Bedria credit for that, because you know, uh, she's been doing it. If you look at the world, 50% of the population is women. Only 1% of the assets belong to women. So when you go to a bank to get a credit, what do they ask for? Collateral, something to, uh, uh, to depend on. Also, according to Harvard Business Review, according to Harvard Business Review, when women, when women start their business, they can do it with 50% less capital and 20% more returns. I don't say that, Harvard Business Review says it. And I would like to very much end my talk today with Jalaleddin Rumi. Um, Jalaleddin Rumi is a philosopher, poet from Anatolia from 13th century. And actually in 2007 in the United States, uh, there was the Rumi year and he sold uh, the, the, his books, poets were sold most. And he has a saying, he says that a candle doesn't lose anything from its light by lighting other candles. So ladies and gentlemen, banks, investors, fathers, and ladies first, let's give women credit. Let's go and light up like candles. And because women can manage money, and we need that in our world today, and let's give women credit. And let's start it today in Athens, where it's being managed by a, a, a woman, by Athena. Thank you very much.